Dead Island 2 is filled with raging psychopaths, monsters of all kinds, and even Jabba the Hutt and his cousins. That's why you should be using a powerful weapon early on in the game to fight off not just the zombie hordes, but harder zombie attack types as well. There are a few good early to mid game weapons you should definitely be using and mods for those weapons to turn Jabba the Hutt into Jabba the Nut. Channel your inner squirrel and eat those nuts. Let's get into weapons and not just stabby stabby but bonks as well. Out of all the weapons I tested early game I'm going to give you my top four weapons and show you why they absolutely smack hard. Then you can smack Jabba the Nut into it okay too much. Our first weapon is going to be the baseball bat or club. Now this seems so simple but I'm going to show you why the baseball bat or a club is the perfect weapon to carry around early on. Weapons do different kinds of damage to enemies based on the kind of weapon you are using. For instance a knife does sharp damage or a baseball bat or club will do bludgeon damage. Certain enemies and bosses in this game are resistant to certain kinds of damage and weak against other kinds of damage. The baseball bat and club both deal bludgeoning damage to enemies which when paired with heavy attacks to the head on zombies can deal critical hits in the thousands even early on in the game. Most enemies aren't resistant to bludgeoning damage and when paired with a character with a lot of stamina such as Danny, you can use heavy attacks on enemies very frequently without having to stop to refill your stamina. Again cards can help you regenerate stamina as well but if you're using a bat or a club you can take advantage of those high damage critical hits on enemies which you can get on literally almost anyone. The spiky zombies later in the game as well as enemies that have helmets on have some sort of immunity to this but for 95% of all the zombies you're going to come across you can destroy them with just these basic weapons alone. I will go into mods for the weapons to make them go from not only average to absolutely insane once I go through the next three weapons you should be using. The second weapon is the officer's cutlass. This is a weapon you will find very early on in a bunch of different forms. You can find one officer's cutlass early on in particular that has a rare electricity mod on it allowing it to do insane damage early on. The officer's cutlass also classifies as sharp damage meaning against many enemy types you can hack and slash off zombie parts and basically make them a squishy little snail once you take all their limbs away. You will get attack bonuses and hinder the zombies around you useless because what are they going to do? Headbutt you. When paired with proper mods the officer's cutlass can do a ton of damage and handle a bunch of enemies around you at once and help you just mow through regular zombies and interact super well with environmental objects. You can find a very powerful officer's cutlass by completing Obi's quest the clean and the snatch outside of Roxanne's house with a floating case in the pool. You will have to start the quest there and visit three individual pools shown here to find evidence. You can see those here here and here. Then you will have to return back to the goat pen house's pool in Beverly Hills shown here once you get the next step of the quest. Go to the pool and beat Obi here for his key. Grab that and go back to Roxanne's pool to open the crate. There you go. That's a super easy, powerful officer's cutlass sword very, very early with a rare mod. The third weapon is going to be the pike. This is because the pike allows you to stand fairly far away from zombies and hit them without having to get up in their face. Many weapons like knives, axes, and other smaller sharp based weapons require you to be very close to the zombies to hit them. If you've played Dead Island 2 at all, most of you would agree. If you get in a zombie or multiple zombies face, especially the runner zombies, you can get deleted pretty fast and especially by crusher zombies. The pike utilizes a heavy stabbing attack that does a significant amount of damage to enemies since it is classified as a two handed heavy weapon and it also animation locks you from nearby enemies for a good bit. The stabbing animation does take about a second. And once you leave the animation you can immediately dodge backwards to avoid any hits and go for the next zombie again and again. The pike is super versatile and lets you get the best damage from a distance and high sharp critical damage especially to the head on regular zombies and bosses. The fourth and best weapon in my opinion is the mace. If you hit a zombie in the head with a fully upgraded mace stacked with mods he's going to actually remember back to his childhood when his mom told him to get off the game at like 9 o'clock and then walked in on him at 2 a.m. and he was still playing and it was RIP. Seriously, the mace in my opinion is one of the hardest hitting weapons in the game, can delete every zombie type including crushers and boss zombies. I've used the mace exclusively for almost every single one of my boss fights and it has made an insane difference. When you hit zombies with the mace using a heavy attack, it almost knocks them down on their face, allowing you to either head stomp them or hit them one more time and finish them off. Since the mace does bludgeoning damage and once you combine that with other damage modifiers, the proper skill cards, and utilize heavy attacks, you will be deleting every single thing in sight. Before we get into how to actually make the weapons OP, a runner up weapon is the large hammers. They do a ton of damage to enemies but since you don't actually acquire them mostly until mid to late game, I went ahead and left them out plus they kind of slow unlike Job of the Nut. Now let's get into how to turn these average weapons into goaded weapons with the proper mods. Wow. 
Some mods can help enhance your damage up to 150% and using the right mods are incredibly important in Dead Island 2. Now keep in mind you can only mod weapons with mods that you have unlocked so constantly check new vendors you meet to buy their mods and take your time playing the game to explore all of the areas. It's not a rush. If you don't do this, you can miss some very valuable weapons and mods along the way that are gonna be harder to find later. So build those up every chance you get. Now currently the best mod overall in my opinion for weapons, melee weapons especially, is the bleed damage mod or called rare melee punctuator mod. Now this comes in a bunch of different forms from uncommon to rare, etc. Just use the best one that you have. You can put bleed damage on almost any weapon and it inflicts bleed damage fairly consistently to many enemies when you hit them. This is great because combining this with the heavy attack specific weapons such as the mace lets you take down most of the enemy's health and then they will bleed the rest of the way out almost allowing for some one shot kills. Other mod types like electric and fire mods you can put on your sharp or other weapons so when you find opportunities to electrocute zombies in water or set zombies covered in oil on fire you can wipe them out super easy. The other best upgrades and mods to be made to weapons in my opinion are revolving around heavy attacks since they are used so often, as well as extra damage output and stamina regeneration. Good upgrade mods are mods like Empowering, which increases damage from critical hits and heavy attacks, damaging both, which increases the overall weapon damage in general, and mods such as this one, which increase heavy attack damage and use less stamina, allowing you to mow through a lot of zombies much quicker and never run out of stamina. If you stack bleed on a mace with those other following damage and stamina upgrades, it is game over for any zombie. This allows you to stack almost the max damage on your weapons and make the best use out of heavy attacks which do the most critical damage obviously in the game. And that being said, finally to job with the nut, we say goodnight and if you guys like this video, click on the video on the right or subscribe on the left and I'll be covering legendary and the best weapons in Dead Island 2 in the coming days. Thanks.